Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And with grateful hearts, together God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 26th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, in our striving to obtain the holiness that the Bible requires, that the Lord Jesus commands of us, there is one area that I have found is often overlooked and can become the most unbecoming trait of those who call themselves followers of the Lord Jesus. Have you ever met someone who considered themselves a Christian? And yet, after a few moments of conversation, you could detect nothing about the language that they use and the language that the world uses. And trying to be as non judgmental as we possibly can, regardless, it absolutely destroys their testimony. And that's what we're going to discuss in our text this morning, which comes out of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. It says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, if you stop and think about some of the four-letter words you hear, and maybe even you use, is there anything edifying about them? Even if they're not used in a derogatory spirit, they grieve us when we hear them. And yet they are so commonly used today that even those who consider themselves the most devout of Christians continue to use this type of language. I can remember a time when if you told someone you were a Christian and they slipped and let one of these words fly, they would apologize to you. That doesn't even take place anymore. I often converse with people who know that I pastor, and yet they use this language with no thought at all. You see, this kind of vernacular is the language of the world. And as those of us who are seeking a life of holiness, we're to put the world behind us, the things of the world, especially the language and the talk of the world. The Bible's very clear. We're not to gossip. We're not to lie. We're not to be talebearers. We're not to speak against authority. And here it tells us that that which we speak should edify those who are listening, and it should minister grace unto them. And look at the next verse in verse 30. It says, and, which is continuing the thought, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So when you're around someone who is using this kind of language, if it grieves you, it is not truly you that are being grieved. It's the Spirit of God within you that's being grieved. And as trying not to pass judgment on the other person, and yet if it grieves us to hear these things, how can it not move them with guilt and shame? And so it's a reflection of their spiritual maturity. And I think that it's time we stand up and we say something. Most of them, if they were talking to their grandmother, if they were in a church office talking to a pastor, or if they were in prayer talking to the Lord, they would not use this language. So why do we allow it? If you're like me, it's because we're trying to be compassionate to the other person and we don't want them to feel bad, but they should feel bad. This is ugly, dirty language and it does not edify or minister grace to my ears. And I'm sure that it doesn't yours as well, friends. Now, if you're of those who use this language, I would ask you to prayerfully take this before the Lord and consider it carefully. Because as I stated, it is unbecoming of a follower of the Lord Jesus. This is the language of the world, and we have separated ourselves from the world. You see, the problem is, is that it's in our heart to begin with. Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of a man that defiles a man. And if at this point you're asking, well, what is allowable and what is not, none of it is allowable. And we're all familiar with the most blatant ones, but I'm even speaking of the euphemisms, 
which is simply a milder version of the word, but used in the same way. And so put simply, if Jesus wouldn't say it, nor should we. If it doesn't edify and build others up, if it doesn't minister grace unto those who are listening to you speak, then frankly, you should remain in silence. That's the message of this text this morning, friends. So let's read it one more time as we close. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed into the day of redemption. Your communication can bless the Spirit of God. Your communication can grieve the Spirit of God. Which do you choose? Well, I love you, friends. I know this isn't the brightest, most feel-good of messages that we've had, but it is a timely message, much needed in the world that we live in. I pray that your journey will be blessed today. And I pray that you put a guard upon your mouth and that you bless, edify, and minister grace to all those that you speak to today. Now, as our Lord wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.